En este video tendrás, eh, digamos, la oportunidad de presenciar un intercambio particularmente intenso. La activista pro vida Kristen Hopkins se enfrenta a una estudiante universitaria cuyos argumentos parecen ser impulsados más por la ovación de sus amigas, igualmente comprometidas con causas progre, que por una argumentación sólida. La discusión está llena de pasión y de un volumen notable. Te invito a ver el video completo y a compartir tu opinión. Me gusta mucho leer tus comentarios. Sin más preámbulo, comencemos. I have a personal question for you. Mm -hmm. Are your beliefs about um, abortion and life and conception that is that have anything to do with your personal religious beliefs? Your belief that life being is a conception that is not shared by mm -hmm. a lot of people. It's not shared by me. It's not shared by any of my friends. So I'm asking you, why should your moral belief be the end all be all and make the law and take away the right to a scene a clean, safe for women to have. And the fact that you can sit here and say that the baby, the seed or whatever you want to call it, the baby that's still in your belly and that it's not born yet, that you should be forced to have that. It's disgusting. And the fact that you can come over here and have an entire career based off of this, and I'm not done speaking. And then you can sit here in front of my friend who was a victim of and say that she should have that baby, it's disgusting. And you should be damn ashamed of yourself, and I don't believe that, and I'm not gonna fight until people like you do not have a place to come on here on my campus that I paid a school to go to and spew your lies. Well, I believe in the First Amendment. Do you believe in the First Amendment? Do you? Do you believe in the First Amendment? I've allowed you to sit here and scream at me for an hour and a half and I'm and saying I don't believe that you should have the right to take away my access to a clean, safe, and as a human right, I have the right to have the autonomy over my own body. You have the right to your autonomy over your own body. We both get knocked up. Both of us pregnant. You want to You don't want to Your decision. If I want to I'm going to do that. Okay. So who are you to sit here yeah, and so tell me Yeah, so I don't want to own a slave, that, that. but you want to own a slave. Am I supposed to just sit around and say that? Do not okay? sit here in front of a microphone and compare owning a slave to me, you wife. That's you have no idea to sit here and say that to me. Ma'am, that is the argument you just made. No, it's not. No, it is not. That is your incorrect interpretation. That is a logical fallacy. That you is you the think argument. you can sit here and go ring around the rosy that is with the me? Argument. Are you done with your question? Because you asked me like you haven't things. answered anything. You've actually you just made a statement and completely anything. deterred my argument right, in a completely different down, way. Oh, do you question. think that you can own a slave? If I want to own a slave, can I own a slave? How can you sit here with a straight face and say that to me? Aren't how you? How you, is you yes. not embarrassed okay, of yourself? Okay, can you let me answer your question? How can you sit here and deny biology? How can you sit here and deny biology? I'm going to ask you the same question. Do you want me to answer your questions? If you will sit down, I will answer your questions. I want, no, I'm going to stand right here, and I okay, want you well, to you tell me how you think it's so okay to compare questions. owning a slave to having a And it yes. it's not even in the same ballpark. Yes, because. Black people were not seen as people in this country. Yes, they were just enslaved. like what you have done time and time again tonight to an unborn child. You have argued. Unborn you child, are, not living. You all, Black people already existed. They were born. Unborn they were children are like, living, literally man. born into slavery. Would you like me to answer your questions? I can't answer if you keep screaming at me. Do you want me to answer your questions? I'm waiting. Are you going to stop Are talking? you going to answer my question? Yes. Or are you going to sit here and look I'm quiet right now. I'm quiet. This is why we have the First Amendment, so they can Am do I speaking? This. So, no. When we talk about a we talk about the living human being that's present inside of a mother's womb. Biology t confirms this fact. This is not a religious belief that I hold. This is a scientific fact. The law of biogenesis says like begets like. We know the definition of life, and we know what's inside of a mother is living because that, ch that child is growing. You can call the child a fetus, a clump of cells, whatever, but the fact is that entity, which is a member of our human species, because I, two humans, can't reproduce anything other besides a human, is in fact alive. The arguments that you're making to support your extremist beliefs to justify abortion is that the child in the womb doesn't have me. value. The argument you're trying to and have value. The argument you're trying to and failing to make in the argument that you, you really don't get to sit here and tell me what my argument is. If you want to answer my question, then answer my question. Ma'am, you said you'd be quiet. 
Answer the, the question. The argument you're failing to make and what you argument you should be making is that you believe that the human inside of the womb has less value than a woman and that certain people get yes, to Yes, it does because it's her exactly. body, her choice. Exactly. Her body, that exactly. Her act, body, her choice. Yeah, that is your argument. Sorry, it is not that it's not a human being or that's, that's living because that's flat out denying biology. We know it's living, and we know it's a human being. What else? What we you're mean? arguing is that, that that child doesn't have the same right to life as his or her mother, because you have decided. And what you said during your comments mm -hmm. was that if I got pregnant and chose not to have, I can do that, but you can choose. Because mm -hmm. the mother gets to decide the value of that person. The mother. That is it's exactly, the mother's child. That's damn, exactly what I'm saying. You're not letting me answer your question. That's exactly Shut what up. happened. That's exactly what happened in pre-Civil War America. You could choose to assign value to black Americans depending on what you felt like. You could say, oh, wow. I am against slavery because I know wow. these people are human beings that have value and no one has the right to own another human person. But if I was a plantation owner in the South, There's I could no say, yeah, they have life. some value, but they don't people have like full value because I, I like deem it. Right it's a Twitter. slippery slope. <laughs> And that is not, by the way, that is not a religious belief. This is a scientific belief that this is a human being. Where we can differ on our belief is the value nice we assign. No, there's other people behind you. The value that you're assigning to me. That is the actual leave. debatable question here today. No, is what it's is not. the value we assign to human beings in the womb? Does a human being in the womb have the same value, Are you gonna stop the going same going right to and life and around and around as other people, yourself? or do they not? That is the true pro argument that if you would have taken an hour to research, you could have come and made, but you failed can to I do ask that my question you now? biology. Can Next I ask my person. question No, now? you can get behind the line. Back the you line. can sit here and you can like, get try back and the line. She's been this waiting argument patiently. and idea that you have of what we believe in and push it back in my face, but it's not going to work. Your you little get the back logical the fallacy ring around the rosy will not work on us. You disgust me. And if right, biology... She's been waiting to speak, ma'am. You're, you're not allowing other women to speak. En el momento de la fertilización se forma un nuevo organismo con un conjunto único de material genético. Este nuevo conjunto de genes resulta de la combinación del ADN del óvulo y el espermatozoide, creando una secuencia genética distinta que contiene toda la información necesaria para el desarrollo del individuo. La información genética en el cigoto es completa y distintiva. A partir de este momento, el organismo en desarrollo tiene un perfil genético genético específico que lo identifica como un ser humano único, con un código genético que no cambia durante el proceso de desarrollo. Desde la fertilización, el embrión inicia un proceso continuo de crecimiento y desarrollo. Cada etapa del desarrollo prenatal sigue una secuencia genética determinada que guía el desarrollo desde el embrión hasta el feto y finalmente hasta el nacimiento. El cigoto, al tener una información genética, genética completa y distintiva, posee el potencial intrínseco para desarrollarse en un individuo completamente formado. Esta capacidad de desarrollo continuo es vista como un indicador de la presencia de una vida humana en formación desde el inicio de la fertilización. En términos biológicos, el comienzo de la vida se define por el inicio de una entidad genética que sigue un curso de desarrollo autónomo. La fertilización marca este punto de inicio porque establece una nueva entidad genética que continúa su desarrollo de manera independiente de los gametos parentales y cambiando un poco del tema quisiera comentar en cuanto a la actitud de las jovencitas o jovencites como quieran llamarse hablar en voz alta puede captar la atención de los oyentes y desviar el enfoque de la falta de solidez en los argumentos algunas personas como ellas o ellas no lo sé creen que si hablan con digamos determinación sus argumentos serán percibidos como más 
más válidos incluso si no están bien fundamentados. En debates intensos elevar la voz puede ser una táctica para intimidar o silenciar a la oposición. La presión emocional puede hacer que los oyentes se sientan menos inclinados a cuestionar el contenido del argumento. En contextos grupales, el apoyo de otros que comparten creencias similares puede reforzar la idea de que elevar la voz valida la postura independientemente de su coherencia lógica. ¿Y tú qué opinas? Déjamelo saber en los comentarios. Y aquí culmina este video. Si te gustó, puedes darle like, comenta el video y compártelo. Asimismo, te comento que tengo muchos más videos similares que te gustarán muchísimo, así que suscríbete al canal. Muchas gracias, hasta luego.